Hi there, it's Karen Baker with a tutorial using the new beautiful mermaid range. Um, I'm going to show you today how to create this concertina card. I'm going to go through it and it's using this die here which is the mermaid to be friends sentiment die if i put this up here you can see and i'm also using elements from both of the larger concentric circle sets which are the mermaid with love oceana so i'm using some of the elements from that and also the other set which is the mermaid with love marina set so let's get started so to start off with, we're actually going to do the colouring first, get all the elements ready, and then we can compile the card together. So I've started off by die cutting some of the images that I want to use. Um, just on some decent cardstock, if you want to get some watercolour cardstock, you could do that too. Tonic do a nice watercolour cardstock range. If you want to colour to get this sort of watery effect, the pens that I've used are my Aquaflow pens. Um, these come in a myriad of colours. Um, you can see, here you go. I've chosen a selection that fit really well with the watery theme. So I've got these two colours. Um, this is Spice Ginger and Flamingo Pink. These two here um, I'm using for starfish, so I've combined them together. Um, sorry, the starfish is more of the um, sort of corally colour, which is the flamingo pink, with a tiny bit of the spice ginger. And then these shells here are sort of more spice ginger with a little hint of the flamingo pink. So you can really mix um, your colours together and create new shades really, really easily. And then I've just used a combination of the other colours here. I won't go through them all, but I'll just point out these three here. Actually, I'll include this one. If you're trying to create skin tones, these are a really lovely combination. Um, if you're wanting a very light um, shade, um, you can use this one here, which is the Vanilla Sunday. And then if you add in different amounts of soft rose and a tiny hint of the Mango Mimosa, you're going to have a lighter shade. If you want to start going to darker shades, um, you can use a combination of this uh, with the which one is this one? The Rustic Oak. So depending on the colour you want, the shade, um, these are really good in combination together. So I've used that with the Mermaid Skin. Um, so I think I used a combination of these two here with a tiny hint of the Manga Mimosa. So I'm not going to colour all of it because it doesn't make for very interesting <laughs> videoing. So I'm just going to show you how I would do a little bit um, of the colouring and then um, we can go on to the next stage. Right, so if I move these out of the way, I'll show you them in a little bit more detail in a minute. But all we're going to do is get, I use an old acrylic block and I use that to put all my colours on and the secret to getting a good match that you're wanting to transfer is to actually put something that is white underneath. Okay, because that now you can see much truer colours and it's much easier to find the shade of colour that you're actually wanting onto your image. So I've started by colouring the mermaid. I'm going to do a little bit of skin now. So, I mean, you can wipe these off if you want to just concentrate on one colour, but I tend to keep my colours on here, apart from the fact it, it doesn't waste any then. So this is a very light shade, you can see. So you're not going to be able to actually see much colour I can see a little bit of colour there and then I'm going to add in a little bit of pink. Don't worry about um, colour transfer, if you've got any previous colour onto one of these just wipe it off on a piece of paper or tissue and it will clean off really well so you don't need to worry about cross contamination of colours. To actually pop them onto my uh, image, whatever I'm colouring, I use my Tonic Aquaflow pens. They come in um, different sizes. I'm using the fine here. So all I'm going to do, make sure I've got enough water. Sometimes before I start, I just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Not too much so there's water coming out, but just enough to prep. There you go. So I can see I've got water coming through. So I'm just going to take a little bit. And with the water colouring, it's always easy to add more as long as you don't add too much and you end up furring the top of your cardstock. But if you put too much colour on, you've got to go through adding a lot more water and dabbing it off. So it's always best to just start off by adding 
a little color and then you can always go back on. So I'm just picking it up really carefully. There we go. And I'm not worried too much about being precise. That's the beauty of watercoloring. You don't have to uh, be super precise when you're coloring in images like this. So I've got a little bit of color down. I know that's not gonna be easy to see. Let me just pop this up here. You can probably just about see there's a little bit of color coming on the skin. So I'm just gonna add a little more. So I'll take a little bit of this. So I want a little bit of dark. And then I'm just gonna put slight darker parts. There we go, just like this. And so you're just going to go through and add and keep adding color until you're really happy. Then I would head on to the um, hair and the outside. What I'm gonna do is use this, um, this color here, which is the flamingo pink, to um, go around the outside to show the sort of bits of sort of coral looking images around there. So we're gonna keep coloring. I won't keep coloring on screen. I'll just move those out of the way. But I want to show you what I've done to add detail. So if I bring these ones up here, okay, hopefully you can see, and I'm gonna try and bring it up so you can see it. I don't want to take it too much out of focus. Hopefully now you can see that I've got several things going on here. Hopefully you can see there are little tiny black dots and white dots. That adds real um, interest and it makes it look a bit more textured and it doesn't look as flat an image with these on. So all I've used for that is a gel pen, a white gel pen, and also a black gel pen. This is quite a fine liner. Um, it's by Pilot, I think. Um, so I've just added little dots to the sections. Now, if I try and tip it up a little bit, you might, let me have a little look, bring it right in. I'm not sure, yes, you can just about see there, there's a real glitter to that. And I've just used the glitter gloss pen. So once I've done all my coloring, I've added glitter gloss over the area. And when you see it in real life, it's really, really beautiful. And the last thing I wanted to point out before we go on to the actual making of our card is how you can use some of the elements to create uh, detail on your card. So I'm actually using here a couple of the dies from the Oceana. So if I remove, whoops, this one here, and you've got the outer die. So if you use these two onto some white cardstock, you're going to end up with this layer. Now this layer, if you actually trim off the edge, you'll actually end up with something that looks like this. So what I'm gonna to do to add interest on the bottom parts of the card, in between the sections, just around the bottom of the aperture, I'm actually gonna slot in little bits of this. Now, what I'm gonna to have to do is cut them down, so I can show you the shape here. So I'm gonna cut them down like that, but you can see it's as if the coral um, or the um, plants on the seabed are swaying with the current, and that's just going to go at the bottom of the aperture. Again, I've colored it with the aqua flows and just make sure you add a little color on the back. Because this is a concertina card, when you open it out, you're going to see front and back of each layer. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how you can do your coloring. You know, here's the little tiny one. You can see this in detail. You know, you can add whatever colors you like. It really is up to you. I like to leave a little bit of white around the outside. So you can see I've just been coloring on the inside rather than taking it all the way to the outside just because I want the white to show. I just wanted a little bit of contrast. But you could take it all the way up. It's entirely a personal choice. So now we'll go on to actually creating um, the card and putting it together. To make the base for all the images that we've coloured in, I'm using some just plain cardstock blanks. Um, these are just half an A4 size, so these are an A5 folded in half. You could make your own, I've just got some inexpensive ones here. Now you're going to need at least three of these and then possibly um, if you want to try this technique you're going to want half a piece. So I just cut one of my blanks in half. Now the reason I'm doing this, um, you could obviously just put lots of pieces together 
but I wanted to put apertures in and I needed the apertures to line up. A good reason for doing apertures this way as well is if you wanted to um, suspend things through, so say you wanted um, something to hang, let me just get this one here. So say you wanted to suspend that in the middle there, you would need to create two of these, have some thread sandwiched through or possibly tie it through there, and where do you hide the bit of thread? Now I guess you could put um, a thicker frame, so you could do that, but I thought I would introduce this technique to you because it's just really useful if ever you're wanting to um, make uh, batch make cards or just do something where you need to hide all your workings. So first of all I got the piece that I needed size wise so I cut one of them in half so that's it cut in half and then I put my circle and I made sure I centered my circle so I knew exactly where it was. Once you've done that die cut it and then you're left with your aperture. Then just put a little cut, doesn't need to be straight because this is your template. Cut the template um, in so you can actually bend these sections together. I found it easiest to put it at the top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this to line up on every card blank. So if we get the first one, now we're going to need two of these. So let me just, it doesn't matter about folding it now because we can obviously add this in. Uh, and strengthen the fold a little bit later. But if we've got a blank ready, what I'm going to do is position my template on the top. Why I'm doing this will become really clear. So once I've got this on here, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take the die. This is one of the tonic uh, basic element sets. These are the circle and I'm going to actually fit it in like that. So now I know that I've got my circle exactly where I want it. Then what I'm going to do, holding on to the die and the top template, I'm actually just going to pull this little bit out the way. And then using a piece of washi tape, low tack tape, we're going to tape the die in place. And then holding on to the bit where I've just taped, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the template off. If at this point you wanted to put another piece of tape on there, that's fine. Um, and if you're worried about it moving, do add a few pieces of tape. And then you're just going to get your plates. If you want it to make sure it's not going to move again, I would just put another piece of tape and you can actually tape it to your board so you know it's not going anywhere. And all we're going to do is die cut it. Once we've die cut, just take the tape off carefully so I don't damage the cardstock. And if you're not putting in cardstock that is too heavyweight, you can easily go through two layers of cardstock like I've done here. There. Okay, so we push this out here. And now I know that this is the correct size. And I also know that once I've done all of them, they're all going to fit together. So once I've cut them all out, I'm going to end up with several pieces. Let me get them all together. So I'm going to end up with, this is going to be the front. We decided like to take you, so if I put it this way it's going to make more sense. And then this bit's going to slide into here for our second layer. You could of course put the back through and have an aperture in the back but I wanted a little bit of stability and I wanted something to be actually seen through the front. So that is going to be my final one there. So that's the basic structure of it. We're going to have to stick it together. But before I stick it together, what we need to just be aware of is we're putting pieces together that were the same size. So what you're going to want to do, and the easiest way of doing it is to do it on one piece, is to actually trim a tiny bit off each end and what that will mean is when I'm putting them together I don't have too much bulk it means that they fit very nicely together and then it's going to be nice and easy to close so I'm just going to stick them um, together in a minute so let me just get all my elements and we'll go to the next step 
To give a little bit of extra stability to the front, what I've done is I've cut another half out. You don't have to do this. Um, you could actually cut it slightly smaller and you could have a contrasting color. I'm trying to keep it white because it's supposed to look um, sort of pastel-y and um, watery. So let's put the first layer. Again, I die cut that layer using the same technique with the template as I've already shown you. So we're gonna put our first piece on, making sure that it's lined up well so you can't see any of the circle from the previous layer sticking out. Okay, so we've got our first layer done. Now the best way of doing this, the easiest way of doing it is to do it from the front to the back. So I've got my front layer, so I know that I'm gonna be sticking this on the front. Now you might leave it till last, um, I'm just gonna pop it on. The front doesn't matter, it's the middle bits that you just need to take a little bit more time on. I made sure that when I was planning this and designing this, this was going to be my front piece. So I knew that I needed to have an aperture that was smaller than this image in order to leave me enough of the image to be able to stick around the outside. So even though, you know, sometimes cards to come together quite organically, if you're making something that's a little bit more tricky, it's always worth having a plan. Granted, not all of your plans will work, but sometimes it's just worth planning ahead. Okay, so let's pop that on there. I'm gonna put it straight. You could put it at a nice angle. Let's just move it over and just go to the back. And if like me, you've put too much glue, just take it off. I've got a bit of a tissue here. Just dab the extra glue off. There we go. What would have been sensible would have me to have just put a little layer of glue all around the edge like that. Okay, so there's our first bit. Now we're gonna go into our second layer and this is where you need to take the next bit. So I know that these are going together like this. So what I don't wanna do is decorate, putting my images on the top of this. I need to hide anything between these two layers. So if this is my top part, if I work on this layer here, then I know that anything that I don't want to be seen will be hidden when it goes together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this image, and I thought it would be quite nice having this over the middle. Obviously it's smaller than the aperture, so all I need to do is put a little support layer. Well actually, um, that will improve the stability of the overall card because you've got lots of elements that you've got a big chunk out of the middle. So this will actually just help stabilize the cards. So I've got some of my um, tonic um, acetate and all I'm gonna do is just lay it across, see where it lines and just put a little bit of glue either side. You can use um, double-sided tape if you prefer. I'm just for quickness, I'm just going to use this. Obviously give it a bit of time to dry, it will still move while it's not dry. Then pop your image onto here. Now I can see that not all of my image is actually going to fit onto this, so I don't need to put glue over the top part there. I just need to put little elements here. If you wanted to give a really, really professional result, I'm doing this quickly, what you might consider doing is actually cutting another one of these colouring it in and then popping it on the back. Um, with using um, glue that dries clear, most of those issues are not going to be a problem. But what you will find, even with um, clear glue, because it's acetate, you will see a little of it. So when it dries, you will see a bit of glue. So if you don't want to see any of that and you want it to look absolutely perfect, die cut colour and just stick that on the reverse because it's a more or less symmetrical image you'll probably get away with it so we've got our bit there all I want to do as well is put some of this sort of coral type on the bottom so I'm gonna lay that there I'm happy with that all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue there and because when we colored it we colored both sides we're gonna lose a little bit of it 
underneath, but that's okay. So you can see on both sides, you can see colour. So I'm happy with that element. So what I'm going to do now, pop it back together again, check that I'm sticking the right part down. So check it's lined up. And then I'm just going to put glue all over the parts that need gluing together. So just be careful that you don't get glue, just as I've done there. Just follow the line of the circle, make sure you're not getting glue over there. Make sure you've got glue on the acetate so it's got a good um, solid grip together, both layers. Right, let's pop that together. So slide it over, match the circles, and then give it a good press. Okay, it's probably a good idea at this point just to pop your bone folder on and just gently press your bone folder over, particularly over the parts. There we go. Let's make sure that's all together. All around the edges. So that's our second layer. So now we're going on to the third and the final layer, which is going in like that. Again, watch where I'm going to be the bottom and the top layer. So I know that I need to put my workings and the bits that I need to hide on this layer here. So fold that down. Again, it's probably worth waiting for each layer to dry. So I'm gonna put this one on like this. This time, I'm just gonna pop that up there. I've got one in the middle, I've got something on the bottom, I'm gonna put another little element on the bottom, but all I'm gonna do is just pop this. I know I'm gonna lose some of it because I'm actually going to have that glued, but I just wanted something at the top end so that there's a bit um, of difference each layer. So I'm just gonna put a little bit if you wanted more stability, again, you could pop um, acetate on here, but because this is only light and it's a small image, I'm gonna get away with just sticking it at the top. And then put my other bit of foliage on the bottom. Let's just put a little bit of glue. Stick that on there, get it how you want. And then what we're gonna do now is stick that bit over there. So pop my glue. Again, you're going to do it much more carefully than I am. Watch you not taking it beyond this little bit here. Put the glue all over. And then slot this part in again. Just being careful that you line it up. I'm just trying to do it quickly, but you're all going to take much better care over lining it up. Stick it down, close it again, give it a bit of a fold, and then we've just got the little back part which I'm going to pop my little mermaid in. Now what I would do is close this over so I can see whether I've got my circle in place, roughly. So I'll put the glue on now so I know roughly where I'm heading for. I'm trying to be quick with the glue. This would look really pretty if it was dangling down, as I showed you before. You know, you can be super creative with this set. The images are so, so beautiful. Right, so I'm gonna put aim it roughly where I had it. It's gonna be fairly central because I've got, the oh, that's not quite right. Because I am using wet glue, it means that I have got a little bit of time where I can actually move it. Make sure that it's centered. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we pop that down, give it a good press. And there, that's our card completed. So whether you're receiving it flat through the post, it looks really unique. And obviously you could put some of the quotes from here, but it's gonna look really beautiful. It's hard for you to see if I try and turn it like this. There you are, you can see. Everywhere you're looking, you've got a different image. And by all means, you know, some of the dyes that you've got, that you've been using already, you can use these in the corners. You can add some of the quotes through, you know, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you like. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough. This is um, how I made the other one. Just a very, very simple card, temp folded card, die cut, 
and watercolored like I've shown you already. I hope you love this die set as much as I do. Um, I hope you manage to get hold of it. Do show us, we'd love to see what you create using these beautiful mermaid with love dies. Um, do post them on our Facebook page or tag us on Instagram. Um, whatever way you choose to post, we would love to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.